Well, good evening. Good to be here this evening. Just to let you know who we are, my name is Gary Moore, and this is my brother Larry, and my mom Evelyn, and my dad Daryl, and Diane Louise, that is uh, Richard's, uh, our pastor's sister. She will be singing. We'll be all singing a little bit. Uh, his brother Ron's going to be playing the Roman soldier for him tonight. Uh, I forgot his lapel mic. So you'll have to listen, and hopefully we can get enough volume out of it to be able to hear everything. Well, what we'd like for you to do tonight is just to walk with us through this view of the highlights of the Apostle Peter. We have to imagine what he had heard and, and uh, things that he had done. You have to remember these men were men like you and I. They were humans like us. They had their faults. They had their, they had their problems like we've got every day. Just like you mentioned Zach did about our golf fishing. What went through his mind? And what did he think at that time? But as we thought about those things and we looked at it, we want you to understand that the songs we're singing are going to inter interface with the play as it goes on. Be several parts of the plays. And uh, we're going to see his call as a disciple, as an apostle. What a thought, what a thought he had to be called of the Lord Jesus Christ personally. Amen. Physically saw him and he calls him. And then we're going to the storm on the sea. One of the places in the Bible that's very familiar uh, with all of us. And then we'll go, of course, to the Mount of Transfiguration. What a sight that was in the day to behold. Peter was there and saw that. And what did he think? And then, of course, we're going to look at the suffering on the cross. We all know how Peter died and things like that. But we're going to look at Christ's suffering on the cross. And then the greatest part of the whole thing is his resurrection. And we're going to be looking at that to see in songs, hopefully, we untitle those two uh, go along with the play. But again, we, we ask that you just listen very carefully. Brother Dave doesn't have a mic, but you listen as he talks, as he talks to the eyes of Peter. He is Peter this evening. And this is how he visioned things. And and like I said before, we, we think of how these apostles and how great they were, and I've always thought, boy, I'd like to be on the inner circle. Man, I'd like to be like one of the apostles. They were like us, but you know you've got the same opportunity as a Christian to be like one of these apostles. Amen. We're not persecuted so much here in this area as Amen. we overseas they are in different places. But we, as a Christian, have the same opportunity. And we can be as close to God as you want to be to God. Amen? Amen. And you get close to Him through His Word, through His reading, and through the preaching of God's Word and everything. And I better be quite willing to have time to play hard. But anyway, we just want to introduce, as Peter comes forward, and we all see Peter as he comes forward to be talking about uh, how his call was to discipleship. Peter, where are you? Uh, calling the Apostle Peter. Calling the Apostle Peter. Of course, we've got the Roman soldier with him. Thank you. Get up, or I'll slay where you lay. Oh, man. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You won't live that long. <laughs> this man is charged with treason and preaching about some god that he knows. Not the gods of Rome. He's a heretic. He will be charged with death, crucified. And by his own request, it will be upside down. <laughs> Come on. What he don't know is, it's not the first time I've been in jail. I'd like to talk to you a little bit this evening. And I want you to go on a journey with me. I got a brother named Andrew. And he come to me one day and he had been running around with John. And him and John had become disciples of John the Baptist. John the Baptist one day, as he was standing there, looking down the banks of the Jordan River, Christ come walking up. 
And John introduced Jesus to Andrew and to John and says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Amen. My brother Andrew should have been home fishing. After all, me and Andrew and James and John, along with their dad Zebedee, we run a fishing business. But Andrew and John somehow had gotten to be disciples of this man named John. A guy dressed in camel's hair. Eating locusts and wild honey. But he started preaching, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Bless you, Lord. And so John was going from place to place as my brother and others began to throw <coughs> around John and began to listen to, intentive to his words. Well, Andrew come running home one day and said, Peter, I found him. Hmm. Hmm. And I said, found who? Oh, I said, I found the Messiah. Oh, my. Yeah. The one that yeah. the scriptures had told me and told us one day would come. John introduced him to us. Yeah. And I went with him. Me and John went with him one day as, as Jesus was walking and we asked him, where would you dwell? And Jesus said, come and see. And we went and and Peter, you know, he, he said, you're not going to believe it. We spent all day there. Evening, we just stayed. And I've come to tell you this evening, I want to take you back with me to meet that man named Jesus. <laughs> you remember when somebody took you to meet a man named Jesus? Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so we went and and I came there, and as I met this unassuming man, as we found later a Nazarene, and just like Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, and as I talked to him there, and he saw me for the first time, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. He said, No longer are you Simon, the son of Jonah. I'll call you Cephas. Well, I'm known in the Bible as Peter, as Simon, or Cephas. That day I began to follow this man named Jesus. The next day as we began our journey with this man, and by the way, I'm still on that journey <coughs> with this man. Amen. And it gets sweeter Every day. Amen. And as we was traveling the next day, we come and Jesus calls a man named Philip. He said, come follow me. And Philip began to follow Christ. And tag along with us. And then he wanted to run and find his friend Nathaniel. And he finds Nathaniel and he said, I found him. I, I know where he's at. I've walked with him. And he's right there, right at the road. And he said he comes from Nazareth. <coughs> the thing he said, well, that kind of seals the deal there. Have anything ever amounted to anything come out of Nazareth? So Nathaniel began to make his journey. And Christ said, Nathaniel, before I saw thee under the fig tree, <laughs> I knew thee. Yeah. The angel said, you mean you saw me under the fig tree? Oh, let me tell you something. Jesus can see you where you're at tonight. Amen. Amen. And as we're standing there and we begin to be absorbing the message that this man was preaching and talking about, oh, no wonder later in the Scriptures you'll find that never a man spake like this man. Amen. Man, he can move our hearts and, and it just like it burned as, as you'll find as reading the Bible as the two went on the way to Emmaus and they said, how did our heart burn within us as we walked with him along the way? And there we begin to make a journey. 
The Bible tells us that at this time that Jesus was invited and his disciples, now remember, were not at 12 yet. And the disciples were invited along with Jesus to a wedding in Canaan. Yes. And if you had known anything about a Jewish wedding, it's a pretty big deal. Pretty big deal. So we went there with Jesus and and the music was playing and the dancing, people were dancing and, and then they had completely run out of wine. Now that really makes the bride's family and the bridegroom's family a little bit at ease. You know, Jesus even talked about later about building a building and not having enough sufficient funds to finish it. And how people will make fun of them and laugh at them and scorn them. So Mary comes. His mother. And Christ not meaning anything disrespectful about Mary. But he said, my eyes not yet come. But you know and I know what mama says is what mama goes. <laughs> so Mary then went to the people and said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do you know I could just give you a keynote in success when following Jesus? Just do what he tells you to do. Amen. Come back to that Yeah, just do whatever he tells you to do. And what amazing thing he told them to do was to fill the water pots full of water. And fill them all the way up. Each of them held 20 to 30 gallons of them. They were 60. They were six of them. And then he said, here, you draw some out and take it to the governor of the feast. And, and the governor of the feast, he began to sip that wine. And he said, my Lord, you saved the best to the last. Oh, so later on after that, we began to go make our journey from, uh, from Canaan of Galilee into a place called Nazareth, the hometown of Jesus. We get there. And Jesus begins to go to the temple or to the synagogue. And there in the synagogue, He began to teach and He began to preach. And He began to tell Him that the Spirit of the Lord was upon Him and had anointed Him to preach and has anointed Him to heal the blind and, and to heal the sick. And we find out that Jesus began to tell Him what was in Isaiah. And, he said, and after that, He said, the Bible tells us that uh, he sat down. And they began to look around. And Jesus got up again and began to speak. And he began to tell them about a widow of Sarapath. He began to tell them about Naaman the leper. Mm -hmm. And how that when nobody was doing anything in Israel, God went someplace else and done miracles. When, no, when no, no other leper was healed in the land of Israel, God sent a Syrian named Naaman, and there God healed him. You know, God's no respecter of persons. Amen. The Bible tells us there's neither Jew nor Greek nor Gentile, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Amen. I'm glad to report to you the day of grace. Amen. 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 So while we was there, as Jesus began to speak to them, he started rubbing the townspeople the wrong way. And they got up and they led him out of the town and put him, led him up on the cliff and they was going to push him off. And I'm looking around, here we are with me and Andrew, John, Philip, and the thing, I said, oh my God, he's going to get us all killed. He needs to tone it down a little bit. But we realize that Jesus is not toning anything down. He come to do what God told him to do. And nothing is going to stop him from doing what God told him to do. Well, later on, we kind of disband just a little bit. And I find out that my mother-in-law is sick. Jesus Heard that my mother-in-law was sick, evidently. So, but he come to Capernaum since he was rejected by his own town people. He kind of moved his headquarters into Capernaum, where we all lived, where me and James and Andrew and John all lived, where our business was. 
my wife's mother was sick. And he came in and he healed her instantly. She got up and started doing what mother-in-laws normally do. And I thought, wonder why Jesus did that for my mother-in-law. Now, you may not agree with me, but here's what I think. Since Jesus knew that he was going to be calling me to follow him, continually, not being able to go back home for R&R &R or anything, I had to just follow him. I then began to realize that if, if Jesus got on the good side of my wife, that she would agree to let me go with him How about that? without giving me a bunch of static. So Jesus healed her mother. So when Jesus called me, my wife said, you better go with that guy. And didn't give me any static about going. Isn't it amazing what Jesus knows? Amen. Amen. Good plan. So we was there one day and we had done fished all night. Hadn't caught anything. And we was fixing the nets, cleaning out the nets and mending the nets, and here it comes. Yeah. A whole great big crowd of people following, just waiting to hear something, just grabbing everything that fell from his lips. Oh, they wanted to hear him, but we found it that he comes to me and he says, Peter, I want you to cast a little far out in, into the sea here and I want to use your boat as a pulpit. And there as I went just a little bit from shore and there as he stood there on the, on the ship and he began to teach and began to preach the gospel and began to tell them the good news of the kingdom coming to them. My, what a day we had there by the seaside. Amen. As he got finished teaching, he tells me, he says, go ahead and launch out into the deep. And I said, man, we fished all night and hadn't caught anything, but at your word, I'll do exactly what you told me to do, because after all, I've, I've seen you heal my mother and all. And so we go out into the deep, and we let down the nets, and we begin to pull the nets and they begin to break. We holler for James and John, bring your boat and come on. There's more fish than we can handle. And I, we had enough fish to begin to sink our boat and John's boat. Let me tell you something and I begin to realize that this is Jesus, yeah. the Son of the Amen. living God. Amen. And I fell down and I said, Depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Yeah. Oh, amen. And he, yeah. and he tells me to get up. He said, I'm going to make you fishermen of men. Amen. And listen as Gary sings about the call that God had on his life. Bless him, Lord. <laughs> And this I reply 
see some things that a mind can only imagine. Yeah. Amen. Blind people yeah. begin to see. Yeah. Dumb people begin to talk. My, my, my. Men that had maimed arms missing and they just threw back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. The touch of this yeah. Galilean. Yes. And the crowds were getting bigger and bigger and bigger each day. And really sometimes the landscape couldn't contain the crowds that were there. So one evening, he tells us, me and the disciples, and now we have grown to the twelve. He picked Matthew up at the seat of customs one day. I really didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't want to be around that tax collector at sale out. But I've learned something in the pickings of Jesus. He has a place for everyone. Come on, Amen. preacher. Amen. Bless the Lord. He has a place, a place for everyone. Yeah. I never was given the privilege to write one of the Gospels. But this tax collector, Matthew, Hallelujah. He wrote one of the Gospels. Man over And he wrote many things about what I'm telling you tonight. And Jesus tells us that let's get in the boat and let's go to the other side. Well, right now in hinder sight, I can look back and see that he gave us a guarantee as he, and also with an instruction. The instruction was getting the boat, and the guarantee was to go to the other side. Amen. But while we were there on our journey going toward the other side, yeah. a great storm yeah. came. Yeah. Have you ever tried to ride out a storm when it seems like there's no place to hide? <laughs> And you'll find in the different Gospels that it talks about that the boat was getting uh, water coming in and then at last we realized that the boat was now full. The Bible said. Mm. Meaning that it's going to go down. Amen. And they begin to look and, and we're looking, trying to find where Jesus is in the midst of that storm with the boat rocking and reeling and we're trying to keep it in a way where we're hitting the waves head on yeah. because if we allow it to hit us sideways, we'll capsize. And we begin to look and somebody hollers, He's asleep <laughs> back here <laughs> on <laughs> the <laughs> pillar <laughs> in the hinder part of the ship. And we all make our way as the sea is rocking that little boat and we're holding on yeah. for dear life. And we get back there and we say, Master, yeah. carest yeah. thou not that we perish? Oh, he jumps up. He goes to the bow of that come ship. On, come on, come on. Put his hands out toward the wind. And he says, Peace! Be still. Yeah. And as Larry begins to yeah. come and sing, yeah. what manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? Amen. Bless you, Amen. Larry. Amen. Bless you. Oh, yes. Bless you, Larry. Bless your heart. Was in danger Bless him, Lord. on the stormy. Come on, buddy. Come on, yes. buddy. They yeah. call for the master to awake from his sleep. With three little words, he commanded the way. Come on, buddy. In
Oh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you. You know how you can really tell somebody got the goods? Is when they want to keep following Jesus. Hey, man, Jesus said, no, you go back and you tell everybody what I've done for you. Let me tell you something. Paul, he writes that we're living epistles known and read among men. Somebody watches your life. Amen. And we need to be the example that we need. Right. Well, we head then back to Capernaum. Remember, that's home base. We get there in Capernaum and there we meet a man named Jairus. He's heartbroken. Yeah. And he comes and he tells Jesus, said, my, my daughter, yeah. just 12 years old, is dying. And I heard about what you did in some of the other towns. I even heard what you've done to Peter's mother-in-law that just lived right down the street. I want you to come and heal my daughter as Jesus is walking toward Jairus' house and throngs of people following him. There was this little old frail woman beside the road put forth a little trembling hand and grabs the hem of his garment. Amen. Uh, amen. And Jesus yeah. said, who touched me? Yes. And we all turned and looked at Jesus. How do you, what do you mean who touched you? The throne of people is around you. And now you're saying somebody touched me? Jesus said, you don't understand. I felt the virtue go out of me. Yeah. Somebody yeah. got a hold of me. Yeah. And there Jesus began to turn. That little frail woman there trembling began to say, oh, I knew that if I could just only touch the hem of your garment, I would be made whole. Amen. After 12 years of spending everything that she had, but the Bible said grew worse. Just one touch of the Master Amen. took care of all that. Amen. 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 Make our journey on toward Jairus' house. And we get there and they done had the people there bewailing. And I don't know if you know it or not, but and in the Jewish uh, tradition, you can hire people to be mourners. I mean, some people can really put on the mourn. <laughs> hey, man, you've seen them at the cemetery. You've seen them. You've seen them when they, when they thought that, I'll just throw this out, you might get mad. You've seen them when you thought that they were going to be included in the wheel. And they want to, and they really wanted to put on the dog and make, make everybody think that they loved it so much. But if you really want to see them squeal, let them let it go to the probate and they find out they didn't get nothing. They really do some squealing then. But anyhow, we find that Jesus said, to, Why you make this big to do? She's not dead, but she's Amen. just sleeping. Amen. Oh, they begin to laugh him to scorn. And he begins to make his way into the room where the little child lay. And he tells me and James and John, say, you boys come with me. Now you'll find that through this exhibition that I've taken you on tonight, you'll find that many times me and James and John always went a little further with Jesus. Let me tell you something. And the reason why that we went a little further with Jesus is because we were willing to go. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You want to go with Jesus, we just be willing to go. We get in there and there that lay that lifeless, dead body of that little 12-year-old girl laying on that cot. Jesus walks over there with her mother and her father by his side and the tears streaming down their face and her heart is so broken. Jesus reached down and grabs that little girl's hand and says, I say unto thee, young maid, arise and she arose. Amen. Amen. And he said, give her to her mother and give her something to eat. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. What a Savior. What a Savior we have. Amen. Well, oh, we find out now that we begin to make our journeys on and again as the crowds begin to get bigger. We're going from one location to another location. Well, when we first signed up for this journey, he told us don't take any script. Don't even take two coats. But just take everything you need that it'll be provided for you along the way. You know what uh, the Bible talks about? To having food and raiment therewith 
Be content. Oh, let me tell you something. There is an art of being content. Glory to God. I would all, I've often said this in my ministry. I mean, not, uh, many times in our lives that we have wanted more things than we can afford. And we all are, we all like that. Want more things than we can afford. And I really realized one day, I would like to be able to buy everything that I want and appreciate everything that I got. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But anyhow we go, and now we're outside of Messiah in a desert area. And they begin to, I mean, there's thousands of people. There was 5,000 men, not counting women and children. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus says, what are we going to do here? And they said, well, they knew, we need to send them to the marketplace and, and get them something to eat. And then they said, 200 penny worth can't buy enough bread for this, for this bunch of people. And Andrew, my brother, come to Jesus in excitement. And he said, I found a boy. He's got five loaves and two fishes. And then reality set in. And with discouragement, he said, but what is that <laughs> among so many? Jesus said, I'll tell you what, I'll just use what I got. Amen. Amen. I'll just take what you give me and I'll use what you give me and we'll go on to that and make them sit down in fifties and in hundreds. The Bible said he began to break the bread, to break the fish. Amen. And he began to give them to the disciples and the disciples went around to the different groups until every man, woman, boy, and girl were fed. Amen. And not only fed, but the Bible said was filled. Amen. And then right. Jesus says, okay, go, go get the fragments that's left over. Anybody remember how many fragments left over? Twelve baskets. Twelve baskets yes. full of fragments. Amen. After dividing five loaves, and two fishes, and have an all-you-can-eat buffet outside there in Bethsaida, and we find out that there was more than enough to feed the crowd that was there. Amen. But that's not all. That evening, the crowd was in a frenzy. They were going to come at that time and forcibly make him king because they'd done seen him. And they've done heard about him raising the dead. They've done heard about him restoring the sight to the blind and causing uh, the dumb to speak, the deaf to hear, the crippled to walk, the lame to run. And they was going to go by force and make him king. So he tells us to get in the boat and he'd meet us on the other side. Yeah. Well, we get in the boat. And we begin to make our journey toward the other side. It's about in the fourth watch. And it's been contrary from the time we left in the evening until about four o'clock in the morning. And we rode. And we rode. And we rode to no avail. And we could not match the strength of the storm. And we thought for sure that we would be lost. But somehow, in the darkness of that night, Jesus saw us. Amen. Amen. And he came walking on the water. Yeah, buddy. Amen. Amen. He was walking on the water, and we first thought he was a ghost or a spirit, and was afraid. And and Jesus cried out, tell us to be a good cheer. And I, I mean, here, me, I, sometimes I, I speak before I think. I said, Jesus, if it's you, bid me to come out of the water. And he said, come on. Amen. And I thought, should I have really said that? <laughs> but I had to do it now because all of them was looking at me. So for, I got out and just jumped out on the water and for a little bit, I walked. Amen. 
I literally actually put footprints in the waves. Amen. 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 But then I began to look at the boisterous waves and the howling of the wind and I began to take my eyes off of Jesus Amen. and I began to sink. Amen. And I cried, Jesus, save me. And immediately, He saved me and put me into the boat. Amen. 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 Uh, just a little side note. While in the boat, they are all kind of because I had sunk. You know what I said? At least I got out of the stinking boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at least I got out of the boat. And just give this one to you. Just take this one home with you. It's not such a shame to fall. Amen. The shame is staying there. Amen. The sin is staying there. Amen. The disgrace is staying in the position where you have fallen. Yeah. In the Bible, if you read in the book of John, you'll find that when he got us back into the boat, immediately we was at land. Immediately we was at land. Well, we had traveled many miles. We saw many things happening in our lives. Yeah. Now we come to another occasion, virtually the same way with the 5,000, and now there's 4,000 men, not counting women and children. But now we've got seven loaves and a few fishes. Well, you know, we already know if he can do it with five loaves and two fishes and a thousand men more, surely he can do the same thing with seven loaves and a few fish. Amen. And he did. Amen. And this time, does anybody remember how many fragments was left over? Seven baskets. But see, you need to do a little bit of word study. The baskets this time was left over was the great big baskets right. or hamper baskets. Amen. This kind of a basket was used to let Paul off the wall in Damascus. Remember when they were going to kill him? And they let him down from the wall. That's the kind of basket that they had. Seven big baskets left. So we got back in the boat the next day. And you know what it was? We got back in the boat and we just had one loaf of bread. And somebody say, what happened to all the bread? I kind of personally believe that Jesus let them just distribute to everyone that's needed. You know what I found out in my ministry and in my Christian life? You cannot outgive God. Amen. God will give you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And we continue our journey. We go to Mount Hermon. As we begin to make our journey up to Mount Hermon, again this time, he just takes me and James and John. And we're going to make that journey up the mountain. While they're on the mountain, he is completely transformed in front of us. He was as bright as any bright day that you'd ever seen. Brighter than the sun. And he was there shining in his Shekinah glory. And all of a sudden there appeared Moses and Elijah. And they was talking there with him. And you know what they were talking about? They were talking about what was getting ready to happen when he went to Jerusalem. What was getting ready to happen when he would come and, and give his uh, life for those that, that were going to a devil's hell. Amen. To seek and to save that which was lost. There on the mountain I said, hey, let's build three tabernacles. Yeah. Let's build one for you and one for Elijah and one for Moses. And then we heard from heaven. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Sometimes we get ahead of ourselves. And sometimes we just need to wait to hear from heaven. That's right. Amen. That's right. So we had heard from heaven and we come down off of the mountain. 
And what do you think we have found at the bottom of the mountain? Mm -hmm. All kind of chaos. All kind of confusion. Amen. As soon as we get to the bottom of the mountain, this man came running to Jesus and said, Jesus, I brought my son to your disciples to heal them. But they couldn't do it. And he said, now Jesus, if thou canst do anything, do it. And I'm going to tell you, I'll show you how Jesus turned the if around. He first, this man asked Jesus, if you can do anything, then Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Amen. And then another question comes to mind. Can we have belief and doubt at the same time? You know what that man said? Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. The Bible said that Jesus touched this boy, healed that boy, and gave him back to his dad. And as, as Evelyn, this more comes and begins to sing the song, the God of the mountain. Let me tell you something. I'm glad that I serve a God that's a God of the hills Amen. and a God of the valleys. Jesus. 
And we've got to come up somehow with a whole shekel. Half a shekel for him and half a shekel for me. Well, Jesus could have made the argument, well, the temple's his to start with. Amen. Why should he have to support and pay for his own temple? Did not he say that you made my house the tent of thieves? Amen. But anyhow, Jesus tells me, he said, okay, Peter, go take your hook and let it down into the water and take up the first fish that you catch. And I went and didn't even have a worm, just put a hook down in the water. And I got a big bite and I pulled it out and there's this big fish. And, and somebody said, well, what kind of fish it is? I'll tell you just a moment. As I got that fish and I began to look in its mouth and there was a whole shekel. And it made a half a shekel for Jesus and a half a shekel for me. And I about never got that money out of that fish's mouth. And somebody said, what kind of fish was it? I said, it was, must have been a Baptist fish. <laughs> <laughs> the way that it held on to that money. I mean, I was pulling and I was jerking on it. I almost pulled that fish's lips off. <laughs> A bad decision. <laughs> but life goes on with Jesus. Amen. Every opportunity that we have, He's teaching. He began a while back teaching in parables. And then later on, He'd get us disciples together and explain to us what the good <laughs> meanings were with what He was teaching. He had given us as disciples, and plus he added another 70 to our bunch, and give us all the ability to cast out demons, <coughs> and to heal the sick and all minor diseases. I remember one day as the 70 came back in, oh, they was excited, and they said, oh man, we've got the authority to cast out demons. Jesus said, what you ought to be shouting about is that your name's written. Amen. 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 That's what you ought to shout about. Right. So anyhow, we're there, and now we begin to make our journey just outside of Jordan. Because the Jews are trying to find a way to kill Jesus. They've already tried to push Him over a cliff in His own hometown of Nazareth. They tried to stone Him to death at other times. And now we find that they're laying in wait trying to kill Jesus. So we're going now up around where about where uh, John the Baptist was baptizing. And we're using it as a safe haven as a retreat. News comes. Jesus, the one that you love, Lazarus, is sick. Amen. We need you now, Jesus. We want you to come right away. But Jesus began to continue as we stay there. And he began to tell us about the news of his friend Lazarus being sick. Now we all knew how much Jesus loved Lazarus and, Mar and Mary and Martha. Because every time he got close to Bethany... He went to their house. Amen. That's right. Because if there's ever a good place to go eat, you could go there. And man, them women knew how to put on the plate. <coughs> so we were there talking and, and we're deciding what we we're going to do. And Jesus continues to wait. Wait there a few days and Jesus said, well, I believe I'll go and wake Lazarus. And we begin to say, well, if he sleeps and he's all right, why, why jeopardize your life and our lives when he's just sick? And how many of you have ever had a bad feeling or thought about the Apostle Thomas? We all label him as Doubting Thomas. On this occasion, you know what, you know what Thomas said? As he's there looking around and we knew that if Jesus went in that direction, 
because Beth is just a, just a stone's throw up the Mount of Olives away from Jerusalem. And they're going to kill Jesus and they're going to kill all of us. You know what Thomas said? Let's all go with Him so that we might all die together. <clears throat> Isn't it amazing at times when we <coughs> need help and strength, God can give us help Amen. and strength? Amen. You remember Joseph of Arimathea where the Bible said that he was a disciple secretly? And him and Nicodemus got bold enough to go and beg for the body of Christ. I'm telling you something here this evening. You can do all things through Christ Amen. who strengthens you. Amen. So here we begin to make our journey toward Bethany. And as we get there, just outside of Mary and Martha's house, Martha comes running. And she's just a little bit upset with Jesus. And here's what she says. Jesus, if thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died. In other words, I give you ample opportunity to come. I, I summoned for you to come. I knew where you was at, and I and we give you ample opportunity to come, but but now you show up and now you're just too late. You're going to find out in this episode here that Jesus never got in a run and He never got in a rush, but He always got there on time. Amen. As we see now a little bit later, and, and, and Mary, she's mad. She's not even coming to see Jesus. And then finally Mary goes and runs toward Jesus and the crowd begins to run and follow her. And they said she's going to the tomb to weep. And she meets it with Jesus and Martha there. And you know what she says? If thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died. As Jesus looked at the heartbrokenness of Mary, and Martha, the shortest verse in the Bible says, Jesus wept. Even though Jesus knew what He was going to do before He even got there. Because He told His disciples, He's going to wake Lazarus. And they said, if He's asleep, then He's out. He said, finally He had to tell them, no, He's dead. I'm going to wake Him up from the dead. Amen. So He goes there and then and He tells Mary and Martha, said, where have you laid Him? And then they begin to put doubt and say, well, he's already been four days now. And he's already begun to stink. Jesus said, where have you laid him? And Jesus said, I'll do my part. Now you do yours. You roll away the stone. Amen. Amen. You do what you can do. And you, when you've done all you can do, I'll do the rest. Roll away the stone. The Bible said that Jesus looked up toward heaven and he said, he said, God, I thank Thee that Thou hearest me and Thou hearest me always. Amen. 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 And, said, Amen. and for His people, He said, I say, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. The Bible said that Lazarus came forth, bound head and toe. And the Bible said, Jesus said, loose him and let him go. So we find then that the journey that we've had all this time is because of the greatness that God yes. has done. Amen. As Gary and them come, and I want them to sing the treasures unseen.
Brother Zach wrote, I believe, and uh, listen to the words to it. He sings it. What a song it is. Jessica wrote this song as a letter from Peter to Judas. Dear Judas, I've been thinking about you for a long, long time. And the more I think, the more I think I find your story's just like mine. Slip away into the night that fell so black. I drew my sword intending to attack. Then, like you, I turned my back. Was it the money? Was it the glory? Did you think you were the hero of our story? Didn't love you taught us never find a home Maybe you just figured you were too far gone Oh, I wish you just held on I wish you just held on If I'm honest The only thing back then that really saved my neck was my fear of fire of what might happen next? Oh, I couldn't take that sleep. But three days later, one rolling stone turned my whole world upside down. You can't imagine the amazing grace I found. I just wish you'd been around. Was it the money? Was it the glory? Did you think you were the hero of our story? Did the love you taught us never find a home? Maybe you just figured you were too far gone. Oh, I wish you just held on. I wish you just held on. Some people want to curse the very mention of your name. Make you the villain, try to pin you with the blame. We're all guilty just the same. Dear Jesus, I'll mourn your end until my living days are through. Now I know that everything you said was true And just what is love can do Makes sinners like rain Even ones like me Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And he was making such a spectacle, some went over to him and told him to try to hold it down. And he just 
tried yet to more. Mm. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. As Jesus walks up to him and, and asks him what he needed and what he wanted, and he said, that I might receive my sight. Jesus touched him, gave him his sight. And as we begin to make our journey, shouting all the way toward Jerusalem, we get there and we get up on the Mount of Olives, and the next day is a coming to a close, and we're now waiting for Sunday. A new beginning. He tells two of the disciples, said, go down off the mountain here and get me a donkey. One that has never been ridden before. Amen. And he said, if the owner of the donkey says anything about it, you tell him that the master has need of it. Bless him, Lord. I don't know about you, but it's almost impossible to steal a donkey without somebody hearing you. <laughs> so here they go, and they get that donkey, and they bring him up to Jesus, and Jesus gets on that donkey, and he begins to make his way down the Mount of Olives because Jesus has a mandate to fulfill. And in going to fulfill that mandate, he has prophecies that he needs to fulfill because Joel said that he'd be coming. The Bible, the, the uh, scriptures tell me that, that Jesus will be coming on the fold of an ass. And as Jesus coming down off the mountain, people begin to shout and begin to praise and they begin to cut palm leaves down and put them on the road and take their outer garments off and put it on the road. And, and we find out that the, this, the other crowd, the Pharisees and Sadducees, said, hey, you're going to have to hold it down. And, Jesus said, if these hold your peace, the rocks and the mountains are going to cry out. So Amen. Jesus fulfilled the scripture and coming down off the mountain, and we find that on that Sunday that he begins to make his journey to Jerusalem. The king is coming. Amen. The king is coming. Amen. Hosanna to the king. And that Monday morning as we awaken again and we again make our journey down from the Mount of Olives down into Jerusalem. And he takes us and we walk into the temple. And he begins to look around as the money changers are selling, buying. He goes over and he takes that table and he turns it over and he runs them out and he said, you made my house. Ten of thieves. Amen. Tuesday, you come back to Jerusalem again. He goes back to the temple. And he begins to teach. He begins to preach. And their attention was fixed on this man named Jesus. Blessing Never a man spake like this man. Yes. And they begin to question his authority. What gives you the authority or who gives you the authority right. to do these things? Right. Oh, let me tell you something. Jesus being smarter than them. He said, I'll answer your questions. Mm -hmm. But you first got to answer mine. <coughs> the baptism of John. Was it from men or was it from heaven? Well, uh, Jesus knew that if they said it was just from men that the crowd put John the Baptist on a great big pedestal and they would have rose up and killed. Then they said, the easy way out, we, we can't tell. <laughs> and he said, neither do I tell you. <laughs> the next day following, Jesus again teaches and preaches. And now Thursday's coming. Thursday morning. He tells me and John, said, I want you to go into the city and I want you to find a man carrying a water pot. And I want you to follow him. And you stay right with him and you follow him and when he gets there and unlocks the door to his house, I want you to tell him that the master has need of it. And here we go. We're 
trying to look, trying to find the man carrying a water pot. You know why that wasn't so difficult? It's because the women usually carried the water. Amen. But now we find that a man is carrying the water and he's stuck out like a sore thumb. <laughs> so we, we easily identified who he was and we followed him to his house. And, and that man, to our surprise, said, the upper room was made ready. <laughs> Amen. Everything you need for the supper yeah. is there. So that evening we gather there in the upper room and you won't believe what's happening. We're all arguing over who's going to be the greatest. I mean, that's the kind of bunch we were. Arguing over who's going to be the greatest. Well, we had to do this because just the day before that, uh, James and John's mama come to him <laughs> And said, Jesus, I want you to make, uh, let my one son sit on your right hand and my one son sit on your left hand. So in order for us to get a leg up on John, we had to kind of stop that, nip that in the bud, and we're all arguing who's going to be the race. In the midst of all that argument, Jesus stood up, takes his outer garment off and girds himself with a towel. And has a basin of water as he walks over to me. He says, Peter, I'm going, to wash, I'm going to wash your feet. I said, not so, Lord. You're not going to demean yourself and wash my feet. Jesus said, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you don't have no part with me. And I said, Lord, not only my feet, but just wash me all over. <laughs> Amen. He said, Peter, you don't need washed all over. You just need your feet washed. And there he went and he washed all the other disciples' feet, showing us that the servant, that the master, is no greater than the servant. Amen. And, the ser and the master needs to serve. And he come to serve. And as we're there, he begins to, we begin to talk. And as we're sitting there getting ready to eat, he says something, and I remember it like it was yesterday. He said, one of you, one of you is going to betray me. Yeah. Amen. And we begin to look at each other. And we begin to look, try to look in our own heart. And we said, but not very loudly, we said, Lord, is it I? Because I don't know about you, but I know sometimes I do things I, I wouldn't expect to do. Sometimes circumstances and different hardships and trials and difficulties make me make the wrong yeah, decisions that's true. sometimes. And we all begin to say, Lord, is it I? I motion for John. I say, John. Because he was over there leaning toward Jesus' side as we reclined there on the, on the ground and lean over to eat. I said, ask him who it is. And Jesus said, the one that I give the sop to is the one that's going to deny me. And there as he reached that sop to Peter, or not to Peter, but to Judas, scared. And he tells Judas, says, What thou doest, do thou quickly. Now what had happened on Wednesday, prior to this Lord's Supper, this last supper, Judas had went to the Sanhedrin and made a deal with the, with the Jews that he would sell Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. Amen. And as Jesus sat there that day, as Jesus went out into the night and we all thought he was going to get something for the feast, and he began to break bread. He said, this is my body, Amen. which is broken for you. And then he took the cup and said, this cup is the New Testament of my blood 
Treat it. Bless him, Lord. And he begins to tell the disciples, I'm going away. But where I go, you cannot come now, but you'll come later. And we're all heart broke. But they told us that he was leaving and we couldn't go. I said, we've given it all to serve you. I said, I would, I'll die for you. And not only did I say it, but the others said it as well. But I was the one that was the most uh, uh, boisterous on my, my demand, saying, I'll, I'll not deny you, I'll, I'll die. He said, Peter, before the cock crows, you'll deny me thrice. Well, not me. Not me. And we sat there that day and began that evening, began to talk with each other and commune with each other and there began to realize that indeed he was getting ready to go away. And he tells us, to let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Yes. Amen. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. <coughs> I go to prepare a place for you. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But I'm going to go prepare for you. And I'm going to come again. Amen. Where Amen. I am. There you may be yes, also. Thank right. God. As we begin to talk more and more that night, we begin to get late. And Jesus said, Do we have these swords here? And I look and I said, yeah, we've got two. And he said, that's enough. So I take one of them. Because I want to use it. See, all of us believe that Jesus was the one that was going to get us out of the Roman rule and get our country back again. Amen. We thought that indeed he was going to set up his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Then, and we wondered how in the world could he tell us he's leaving and all these things if it's told that he was one day set up on the throne of David and he'll rule and reign. And now he tells us he's gone? Bless you, Lord. Well, we followed you for three and a half years and now you tell us you're gone? Mm -hmm. And we sang a hymn went out into the night and go again up on the Mount of Olives into a garden called Gethsemane. And Jesus said, I'm going to go away and pray here. He said, Peter, James, and John, you come with me. And he stops us a little bit above the others and he said, you stay here. And he goes about a stone's throw away and he said, you watch and pray. And he goes, and the Bible said that he prayed and asked God, said, let this cup pass through me, but not my will, but thy will be done. He prayed three different times the very exact same prayer. Let this cup pass through me. Bless him, Lord. He wasn't afraid of the cross. Amen. It wasn't the sufferings that he was uh, afraid of, but he realized that for the first time that him and God would be separated. He said, is there any other way? Any other way that we can redeem man without me being separated from you? <coughs> so there that night I came back and the disciples, they were asleep. We finally wake them up, and as we look down over the hill, there comes a multitude of men coming up the side of the mountain with lanterns, ladders, and torches. Isn't it kind of ironic that they're coming with lanterns and torches to find the light of the world? <laughs> In the darkness of the night, they come there and Judas had already made a sign to them. He, the one that he kisses on the cheek will be the one that he rests. Yeah. They come up there and one began to 
uh, to come toward Jesus, and he just fell back. They, they all fell back, he said, and they asked, who do you seek? And they said, Jesus. He said, I am. And they just fell back. And then we find that Jesus says, let these others go. So we all begin to run away into the night. And as I'm looking back, I see the soldiers as they're smacking him upside the face and mocking him, spitting on him. And then they take him down to Ananias in the middle of the night. And they have a trial that was unlawful. And then the next morning they take him to Capias. As he stands there before the Sanhedrin. And, and then they take him to Pilate. Pilate begins to examine him and says, I don't find no fault in this man. And yet they wanted to continue on with the interrogation. And Pilate, through the interrogation, found out he was from Galilee. And he said, well, wait a minute. It's, he's out of my jurisdiction. Send him back to Herod. So they sent him to Herod. But Herod's more interested in just seeing a miracle. That's all Herod wanted to see was some kind of miracle. And just give this one to you to think about. And that's all some the day will see. Amen. But God does not have a spiritual sideshow. Amen. Amen. As we find out now that as he goes back to Pilate again, Pilate washes his hands in front of the crowd and said, I wash my hands of this innocent man. Amen. And that people did stand there that day being led on by the priest and by the Sadducees and by the Pharisees begin to cry out, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. Mm. Pilate said, I'll try to reason with this people. I'll, I'll give you Barabbas, a man that's guilty of murder, insurrection, a thief. I'll release him or I'll release Jesus. And they begin to cry out in unison, release unto us Barabbas, crucify Jesus away with that man. Out of all the beatings that night, the cat of nine tails, and putting on the purple robe and them mocking him and the reed in his hand and the crown of thorns, Friday morning comes. And they take him, begin to lead him down the Mille Dal Rosa to a place called Golgotha. Amen. And as they're leading him, Christ, because of the lack of blood and lack of sleep, his body to the point of exhaustion falters and falls beneath the load of the cross and they grab some Simon of Serene to carry the beam up to Golgotha and there as they mock him and ridicule him and spit on him and pluck the beard from his face and there they take him to the place called the place of the skull and he mounts that cross and they nail his hands and they nail his feet on the right was a thief, and on the left was a thief. And the way that the Roman uh, government did that, when a person committed a crime, they would take and put above the cross, above their name, or, or above their head, a called a superscription. And it was what they was guilty of. The thieves on the cross had above their head, guilty of thieving. You know what was above the head of Jesus? This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Amen. The only reason that he died was King of the Jews. He told Pilate, he said, if my kingdom was of this world, then my soldiers, my followers, my faithful men would fight. But one of these days, and I'll give this one to you as just a side note, they mocked him and spit on him the first time he come, but the next time he comes, uh, it'll be different. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. He came riding on the little donkey uh, coming down from the Mount of Olives, but the next time he comes, uh, he'll be riding a white charger, Amen. and there we'll find the armies Amen. of heaven will follow him, and there he'll come and put his feet on the sand, uh, and put his feet on the sea, and there he'll declare time no more. Amen. And he'll put down all authority, and one day he'll rule and reign. Glory 
Glory to God. Amen. 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 There Amen. they crucify him and mock him for the hours that he's on the cross and the cries around the cross and the cry that we want to look at particularly this evening as Daryl would come and save the soul by thirst. Think about this. Bless you, Lord. The one that created the oceans. The one that measured the seas in the hollow of his hands. Said I thirst. sun down and hid from the view of man 
Amen. the final sufferings of his son. Mm. When Abraham was getting ready to offer up Isaac, mm -hmm. he said, Dad, here's the fire. Mm -hmm. Here's the wood. Mm -hmm. But where's the sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Abraham says, and God shall provide himself a sacrifice. Amen. Now the new versions of the Bible say, and they change some words, and they said, and God shall provide for himself. That is what it said. Amen. It said that God shall provide himself a sacrifice. Christ said, I and the Father are one. So we find that Jesus did indeed die for our sins. Amen. Amen. The just Son of God died for our sins. But suppose what God the Father had in view as Larry would begin to sing the windows of heaven.
they did. Amen. A dead Savior would have done nobody no good. But because He lives, Amen. we can live also. Amen. As the news came, as the angels tell the women, why seek the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you that he is alive Amen. and doing well. Amen. God's not dead. Amen. Amen. Brother Richard, will you come? <coughs> I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I don't care how bad you've been. As for the day, wonderful. Done a wonderful job of telling the story of what Peter saw and what Peter witnessed. Amen. Peter denied it when he said he would. But after Jesus was risen, he told the ladies, Go tell my disciples. And a time to live, a time to die, and that is why Messiah came to give his life so you and I could find the way to live, to live.
witness of Amen. what somebody else experienced. Amen. We've got to have a personal experience Amen. with Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. Zach, if you would come back to the piano for just a moment. You're here tonight. So Brother Richard, I, I don't know the Lord, but the Lord spoke to my heart tonight. Through a word of what Brother Dave had to say, what somebody else had to say through one of the songs. I believe he's real. I know he's real. Amen. 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 Hey, it's a big step. As I said this morning, a lot of people said, oh, it's easy. Yeah. I beg the difference. Yes. It is easy, but it's not easy. I'll tell you what, making a decision to follow Jesus is a big decision. It's a life-changing decision. It, ain't, it don't require nothing on you but to submit. But to submit for a human is a big thing. Turning everything over to somebody that you can't see, that you can't hear with an audible yeah. ear, it's a big thing to trust somebody with your life that you can't see and hear. And you got to do it through faith. That's a big thing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But I'm telling you what, he'll speak to your heart and you'll know it's him. Are you ready? Every head bowed and every eyes closed. Just me and Brother Dave looking on the congregation. Brother, Brother Richard, Brother Dave, I'm ready to trust Jesus as my Savior. I wouldn't embarrass you. I wouldn't call you out. I don't believe in that stuff. Jesus won't embarrass you, so what right have I got to? Bless him, Lord. But if you're here tonight and you say, Brother Richard, I want to be saved, and I want you preachers to pray with me. Brother Gary here, he's a preacher. Slip your hand up good and high. Say, I want you preachers to pray with me. Could you do that? I need to be saved. I know I need to be saved. I want to be saved. Well, preacher, I ain't ready to be saved tonight, but I want you to pray for me that I'd be saved before it's too late. So y'all remember me in prayer. Slip your hand up and say, y'all pray for me. Bless your heart. Somebody else. Y'all pray for me and I'll get saved before it's too late. Father, we come before you tonight. We're thankful, Lord, for the service. Yes. Thankful, Lord, for all that we've seen and heard and felt. We praise you, Lord, for the sweet spirit that's been yes. here. Yes. God, I thank you, Lord, for the hand that was raised. Lord, you know the need. And I pray, Lord, that you would help each individual. Bless Brother Dave and his church, Lord. God, the good singing tonight, I pray that you would bless each one of them. I pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, that we would take what we've heard tonight. Lord, that we would lodge it in our hearts. Lord, we would allow that to feed us, Lord. Help us to grow, draw closer to you. Last but not least, Lord, deal with the lost. Those viewing my live stream. God, whether it be tonight, tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. Lord, help folks to see that they need you more than they do anything in this life. They need to be saved and need to serve you. Give folks traveling mercies as they go home. Lord, watch over us and keep us all, Lord, to the yes, next appointed time. Yes. 
It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good night. God bless you. Be careful. Amen. Bless your heart. We love you. Come back. <laughs>